standing meeting for August 22 to order at 5.30 p.m. Um, our first topic is introductions, but we're going to skip that and come back to it. Um, so minutes review, you sent out minutes from our last meeting, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, does anyone need a, uh, I can go and make a photocopy if anybody needs a, a hard copy. I looked at it when it came out. Okay. And must not have yeah. had any comments because I didn't clock in with them. That's our meeting now. I can make a motion to uh, approve the minutes from uh, July, was it July 13th? I think, I believe so. Yes. Okay, we have a second. Second. All right, any discussion? Yeah, all right. We are voting on the minutes from last meeting. We'll have we'll do a roll call vote because we're not here all in person. Allie Vandervon. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Beth Brown. Aye. Julie Chalpin. Aye. Mark Brennan. Aye. Dave Sharp. Sorry, I'm going to abstain, I guess, since I wasn't at that meeting. Good plan. <laughs> so that's 501. That passes. Um, so let's go back to the first item on the agenda, which was introductions. Um, why don't we just go around and everybody say, I don't know, your name and how long you've been on finance committee and what other pertinent experience there is. So <laughs> how about that? Um, I'll start since I'm making everybody do this. So I'm Julie Chalfont. Um, I've been on finance committee. This is my fourth year, I think, on finance committee. Um, and then other, I'm also on the town building advisory committee and um, did a lot of work with um, PTA in the past. So I feel fairly familiar with the school budgets. Um, that's probably sufficient. Allie, do you wanna? Yeah, I can go. Um, I thought I was on the committee for four years. So, but I was here a year longer than you, I think. So maybe I thought, maybe I'm on here for five. Maybe years. I was three and you were four. Well, we something go. like Whatever. that. <laughs> um, I'm Allie Vandervelden. Velden. Um, prior to the finance committee, I was served on the capital committee, committee for a little while, a couple of years maybe. Um, and I am um, the CEO for the community health center, Franklin County is my other, my other life. Yep. I'm Jim Cambius. Um, uh, this is, I believe my third year on this committee, Sorry. I think, maybe my second. <laughs> you will skip anyway, that I'm the second, the, I'm the second. no, this must be my second, yes, I, I, I'm, I, I, I was, I spent a year just watching and then I got elected <laughs> secretary, and so, yeah. okay, um, and um, I'm also on the library board of trustees, which raises some interesting conflicts, um, and um, I'm, uh, uh, when I'm not doing this, I'm a writer and game designer. I'm Beth Brown, and I've been on the committee for less than a year, and I'm confident in this. <laughs> um, and I'm also, I've been on the rec committee for, for quite a while. I don't remember how many years I've been on that. Um, and outside of this, I teach math at GCC. I'm uh, Mark Brennan. Uh, this is my first year on finance. Uh, I've done two years with uh, Capital. Um, outside of here, I'm an engineering director. Hi, I'm John Pereski. I've been on the finance committee quite a few years now. I used to be on Capital Improvement Planning. Uh, the finance committee has to have a representative on the personnel board. I'm that representative right now, although I believe I'm gonna be replaced. Um, I, prior to retirement, I was a CPA. Dave? Hi there. Uh, my name's Dave Sharp, and I guess I've been on this committee for about a month. Um, happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Um, I was on the uh, Deerfield School Committee for a number of years, so um, certainly have some familiarity with the uh, budget there and a the large portion of the, the town's budget. Um, in my other life, I am a lawyer uh, in Northampton in a small firm, and I love Deerfield, and I am 
just uh, wanting to obviously help out. All right, thanks. Um, got it. I don't want audio because that would be very distracting. Okay. Um, good. So the next item on our agenda is um, the elections to our position. So we have two positions left that we need to pick. One is a personnel board represented, the other is a CIPC. Um, let's start with CIPC because that might be easier because I'm really hoping that Mark might be able to do that. Yes. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Okay. Um, is there any, do we have a motion for that? I move that Mark be our representative to the CIPC. Second. All right. Um, a little bit of discussion. Last time we discussed this, we were uncertain because he was already on the CIPC. But since then, we figured out that he will no longer be the general, whatever you call it, at large representative on the CIPC. That position will be filled um, by somebody else. And the moderator is working to fill that position. So he can be our rep and he will only be filling one position for that. Any other discussion? No? Okay, let's do a roll call vote. Ali Vandervalden? Aye. Jim Cambius? Aye. Beth Brown? Aye. Julie Chalpin? Aye. Mark Brennan? Aye. John Pereski? <laughs> aye. Dave? Aye. All right, that's unanimous. Um, okay, so the next, oh, personnel board. Um, John has been a rep on personnel board for for a while, but they meet regularly on Mondays and he can't make Monday meetings. So he is, that's I, my understanding is that's the only reason you're asking to be replaced. Like, and it's time for somebody new. Okay. Um, so would anybody like to volunteer to be the personnel board rep? <laughs> it's well, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I, I would normally volunteer for such a thing, but I'm also on a, another town committee. And so I don't know if that helps me push, push away right now. Um, did you say regularly on Mondays? That could be. No, once a month. Yeah. I mean, if there are no other takers, then I will. Yes. <laughs> I'm not sure what the right word is. Do you want to get into? I will step up. You're just starting with finance right now, and you're just starting with ZBA as well, right? Yeah. That actually sounds like a lot to take on. To Julie, me. Yeah. Why are you talking him out of it? Yeah. Huh? Here. You're talking him out of it. <laughs> why not? Okay. <laughs> Nobody else wants to do it, right? I can't. Okay. No, you can't. <laughs> No, if I guess if you're willing, why don't you try it for a month or two? And if it's not sustainable, we can revisit. Yeah, could could I get a maybe just a brief description of what the, the personnel uh, committee is? I guess in town, and is this a would I be? It's a voting member of that committee that they just require someone from finance to be on it. Yep. Yeah. So the bylaws require a person from finance be on it. Yeah. personnel committee the charge is actually in the bylaws david if you want to read it but essentially the personnel board is uh, responsible for wage evaluations and job descriptions as it relates to um keeping staff up to date within the market and stuff they yeah. also can act as a grievance board although i haven't seen that happen yeah seems like a ceo would be a good person for that I would do it We're at my alley, but I'm having a baby in like two weeks. <laughs> I'm sorry, I cried. <laughs> I can't see that from here. If in six months I am a sane human who can still participate in things. So as as she's sleeping through the night you're in. <laughs> Maybe, we'll see. Yeah, but I mean, it would be interesting in the future. I just, you know, yeah. in case you can't do it. So there's one other thing I should tell you, David, is the meeting commitment is usually once a month. It's often the third Monday of the month. Um, the only time that that increases is during budget season when we're setting a cost of living adjustment and putting a hearing together and completing that as it relates to the wage and compensation plan mm -hmm. that gets developed between December and usually February, March at the latest. 
Okay. And can I just ask, are there, how many members of the finance committee are not present today? Everybody. None, we're all here. We're all here. This is the committee. Yep. Okay. The okay. Yep. So, um, all right. I mean, I guess I'll, <laughs> I'll take that on. And I, if I beg off of it, then I'll come back to the committee and we'll talk about it. But okay. yeah. So do we have a motion for, do we have a motion? I'll make a motion, think... David Trapp, be a representative to the personnel board. Second. All right. Any further discussion? Thank you. And uh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's my punishment for missing the first meeting of yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. welcome to finance committees <laughs> all right roll call vote Allison Vanderbilt aye Jim Cambius aye Beth Brown aye Julie Chalfin aye Mark Brennan aye aye John Dresky. Dresky, aye Dave Sharp aye that's unanimous beautiful all right um next thing on the agenda is the main topic which is the discussion of the debt um, so last time we met, I said that I would present um, some information on debt that I have prepared. Um, let's see if this is going to work. Yeah, look at that. Okay. Um, that I had prepared previously. So I, 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 put these thoughts together and I presented it to CCI and I have since revised it a bit. So um, I'm gonna just run through this and we can ask questions and discuss. Um, can I, I'm sorry to interrupt, Julie. Can you just, when you use an acronym early on, um, you said CCI? Yes, um, I can never come up with what that stands for. Collective Collaborating. Connecting Communities Initiative. What it is is- Got it. I, yep, I know what it is. You know what it is. Okay, good. Um, all right. So we last year as a committee went through and did financial indicators. We will revisit those again this year. I think that's something we'll do every year. But as of last year, this was our opinion on the financial position, that, that the financial status of Deerfield is pretty strong. Revenues are good. Assessed values are, are good. We have a healthy reserves, our operating expenditures at that point were sustainable. Yeah. Do you want, I have a question on that. Do you want to discuss it now or do you want to go through your spiel? Um, I question, I guess, I don't think operating expenditures are sustainable at the current rate. Every year we say we can only go increase two and a half percent. Yep. Um, to me, that's not sustainable. I know we concluded, we might have concluded that before, mm -hmm. but I guess I, I wonder. I, I actually wonder too, because of the large increases in personnel costs that we took on last year. And, right. um, but um, I, 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 don't, I don't want to deal with that right now. So okay, all right. I, I think we need to talk about it, but I don't think, I, I'm trying to avoid that today. But, okay, all right. Um, I, I don't disagree with you though. So um, there were some areas of concern in the specific ones. We talked to a couple specific ones are the average single family, family property tax bill increased fairly rapidly over the past 10 years. And we rated that as unfavorable. Mm -hmm. Our debt load and debt service are both within acceptable limits, but they increased substantially. So we rated those marginal um, and we are all living in inflation, which is gonna affect everything, which is a worry. So a couple, you guys remember this because we talked about it a lot probably, but um, if we look at the average, this is the average single family tax bill. Um, and that increased 46% from 2011 to 2021. If you look at that same time frame, the single family home value only increased 14% and the DOR income per capita increased 13%. So our taxes are going up faster than either the value of our homes or our income. Um, further, this does not include the fire and water taxes because those are billed separately. They don't fall into this category. It doesn't include enterprise fund fees. So anybody who's on sewer are feeling the pain of the increase of the sewer fund. Um, this, But this does include um, excluded debt. So that is part of this. <clears throat> Right. Um, the other thing we looked at was debt load and debt service. Um, 
Mass General Law generally prohibits debt in excess of 5% of, of a community's equalized valuation, which is essentially the total of all the assessed values of our properties. Um, it's not quite that, but that's essentially what it is. Um, when you approach this limit, it's seen as a warning sign by the bond rating agencies. And when we get our bond rating letter, they write down lists of things you can improve in order to improve your bond rating. And this is um, one area that they call out. Um, and then just to note that we are right now below that 5% limit, but the wastewater treatment plant debt that we already took on has brought us up to about 3.3% or so. What's up, John? You have a question? Yeah, uh, on the right side, Yep. on the debt service, mm -hmm. it says enterprise debt fund debt service above the 10% recommendation. Is it a recommendation or is it law? It's, it's not law, it's okay. just a recommendation. So um, the debt service is actually paying off that debt. And we say that that, so these, both of these are in our financial policies that we'll be visiting in a couple of months, but sort of general wisdom is debt service should not exceed 10% of your net operating revenues. Um, so right now our town debt service is well within that <clears throat> limit, but we are also paying interest only on the wastewater treatment plant debt so far. Um, you look like. Well, we first we we put in the new clarifier, right? And we did pay that off completely. In um, actually, we did that in 2022, didn't we? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and, and we also paid um, a small amount in 2021, we paid a small amount down on the bigger project and we paid um, some down on the clarifier. So, so those two did increase that quite a bit. And I have to say that in both of those years, we used a lot of retained earnings to help us. I shouldn't say a lot, but we did use some retained earnings to supplement that because we had the retained earnings available. Yeah. Okay. And 23, we paid off in something as well. In 23, yeah, we did a pay down of 400,000 total. Yeah, so 300,000 out of the wastewater treatment plant budget. Okay. So it's not as bad as this presents. It's, um, we are paying off some of that debt. Right. Um, and then um, the enterprise fund debt service is above that 10% recommendation. It's, um, I'm not convinced that that's, I can't even articulate this, I'm so gonna have. Um, what I'm thinking is that the enterprise fund is focused solely on sewer and the, su the debt is solely sewer. So the fact that it's greater than 10%, maybe that's not the same kind of indicator of concern that having your debt above 10% of your entire budget is does that make any sense yeah. but anyways that's there um that's just the numbers in case we want to talk about what the actual numbers are but if you look in this first column you can see oh it's a lot easier when i look at the screen um you can see what we paid for debt service every year for the past 10 11 years um so lat 2022 was 614,000. 531. All right. So as part of CCI and town building advisory and whatever, there's been a huge amount of discussion of what we want slash need in town. And this is, this is only my list. So it is not definitive by any means, but I tried to capture everything that I've heard go by. So if you just go down the list, you've probably heard about all of this, but wastewater treatment plant upgrade. South Deerfield, in my opinion, is essentially completely funded. Like we voted everything and I don't, I don't know that anything else will come. If you don't talk about the sewer piping, but the, the right. wastewater treatment plant itself, I think that's sort of done. Um, old Deerfield, we haven't even started. Um, there's the town park and recreational fields, the new town park that's being done out of um, CPA funds. And then there was a very nice grant that came through for that 900 and something thousand. Um, so if we can ever get it built, um, 
there will be there's that that is essentially funded. There's the town common revitalization, which we voted last year out of CPA funds. Um, and that work, I mean, that planning is progressing on that. Um, and the next thing is to improve the town hall office space to get better offices, meeting space, and storage. Um, and the current plan is to refurbish what we're now calling the 1888 building, which is the old the building that the senior center was in, they were calling it the grammar school for a while, but that confused everybody too. So now it's the 1888 building. So that's gonna be refurbished and many of the offices in this building are hopefully gonna move into that building once it's refurbished. Um, there is desire for economic revitalization. The one project I know of right now that's been approved for that is the Leary Lot Improvement, um, which again was voted last year and is moving forward. No, it wasn't voted, it was- um, That's using, ARPA. ARPA funds for that. Mm -hmm. um, and then we get into the stuff that people want that isn't funded, which is a, a new senior or community center, um, which would have office space, meeting space, exercise space, kitchen, and then the medical, the, the town nurse would probably be co-located with that. There's central campus infrastructure where they're looking at walking, biking, driving, parking, you know, that sort of people and traffic flow. And then there's also a desire for it to be energy smart. And there's been some discussion about a centralized geothermal plant that would go somewhere in the middle of all these buildings and serve all of the buildings um, is the goal there. Um, subsidized housing, there is a senior housing group that has been working. They meet every week and they've been working for quite a while. They are trying to come up with a plan for subsidized senior housing in town. In order to have subsidized senior housing, you also need to have sort of, I, I, I am not the expert on this and I'm gonna hose it up, but um, you need what they're calling workforce housing too. So we do have a small amount of subsidized housing in town that is on Elm Circle. Um, and the sort of the the grants that you can get depend on the amount of affordable housing that you have in town. Um, so there's a discussion on that um, that's as well. Almost at this time. It runs out like 2028 or something. Oh, so the yeah. hope is that oh, okay. it would so renew. Um, I, I think I'm going off memory, so yeah, I don't know, right. but um, yeah. I think it's 2028, but okay the hope is that they would renew their mm -hmm. whatever it is the um subsidized piece of that and continue that on but again it's not as a i don't know the numbers but there's some percentage of the housing in town that you're supposed to have that's affordable and we're nowhere near that mm -hmm. and um so um the discussion of the senior housing folks is that Sunderland has built a large subsidized senior housing complex, and they did it entirely on grant money. It cost the town three to five hundred thousand dollars out of their CPA funds, and the entire rest of the complex was built using grant money. So the hope is that we would be able to replicate that. The question is, because of our lack of affordable housing in town, whether we would be able to do that or not. Um, and then the last item is the library expansion, which I think everybody knows that the, the grant was approved. And so now the town needs to decide whether they want that or not. <clears throat> so that's sort of the big one-time things that have to be done. In addition to that, there's sort of the ongoing stuff. So there's been a lot of discussion about how we need to continue to maintain our buildings. We need sidewalk repair, we need street repairs. Um, there's the sewer piping throughout town that needs to be, um, repaired essentially. Um, the highway department has laid out a 20 year plan for replacing all of their equipment. So there's that planned periodic replacement of highway department equipment. There's the annual replacement of the police cruiser. And then there's the town electric, I put electronic communications, but it's the whole like the server and the records and the, there's a whole website, all of that electronic stuff that has to happen. And all of this stuff needs money to do it. Um, all right. And the schools. 
Yeah, yeah, which aren't even there. So I just throwing stuff up here, but this is from, this is the sewer. This mm -hmm. is the old Deerfield sewer. And um, this is from DPC, Dave Perkett <clears throat> Consulting, who are the, um, the engineers that are working the South Deerfield plant and advising us on the old Deerfield plant. And if you look at the date, this was January 5th. So this is a little old, right? Um, these are options for the old Deerfield plant. One option is just to upgrade the plant that's there. And that price, if you look at this green line, this is kind of the line we should focus on, in my opinion. Um, and that the price then in January was $16 million for doing that. And then there's two alternatives. Instead of upgrading that plant, there's an option to put a pump station in and pump it all the way down to the South Deerfield plant. The South Deerfield plant has been sized to handle that, um, that effluent. Um, so it's capable of taking it with the new plant. Um, and what that does for you, if you, it, it gets, it's in a floodplain, it's on the Deerfield River, which is being designated as scenic and something or other. Um, and the schools that are there don't really want it in their backyard and they want to support getting that out of there. And there, there's a bunch of arguments for that. If you add, if you just do a single, if you add a second pump station halfway down, that provides you a point that you can tie into and that gives you the capability of expanding the sewer and then you can have sewer farther up and down five and 10 and you might even be able to go across 91 and tie into those roads up there like Boynton, what do you call it, West Deerfield, um, that area. Okay, so there's two routes that could be one goes down Mill Village Road, the other goes down five and 10. The argument is that Mill Village is the way to go because five and 10, then you have to like interact with the state and all of that stuff. So the permissions would be a lot easier um, on going down Mill Village Road. Um, and if you do the two pump stations that comes out to like 25 million back in January, it'll be more than that if they estimate it again now. Um, this orange line you see is less than that. The argument here is that if you can then expand the sewer and get more people on sewer, then they would start paying sewer fees and then you could um, bring this down. The reason I'm focusing on this green number is that this hasn't happened yet. And um, so, you know, it doesn't like this, like this plot right here has them starting to pay in year one. Well, that's not going to happen until you expand the sewer. So, so anyways, um, but, and then I just put a map in here. So the, um, the, the old plant analysis done is way up here in old Deerfield and you would just come down Mill Village Road and then cross over and tie into the to the South Deerfield stuff. I, I do have a question. I noticed yeah. that there's options depending that the, each one has two options with uh, one or two pumping stations. Right. What's why uh, the why the difference? I mean, why, why one or two? two? Yeah, I mean, what would that accomplish? As Julie, as Julie was explaining, um, if you just do the one, it's just a force main, so it's just high volume down to the other plant. You can't really tie into that. I see. So if you do two, a second one, two stations would allow for additional it, hookups. It would. Yep, it'd give you that ability to kind of break it halfway and pick up some other users and development on five and ten and maybe get us a MassWorks grant to maybe afford it. I don't know. So it's all a long shot. Every bit of it has just been yeah. tough to figure out. So there's, um, are you talking, when you're talking about new users, are you talking about people who already currently live and aren't on it and are going to pay to convert to pay yeah. the fees? Like mine is um, <laughs> 30 years old and on its last leg and it would, just be a full, if I had the ability to tie in the sewer uh, and plus my property just in my neighborhood, it's very wet. It's just so wet back there that I, so I'm not the potential sure. Potential that some people might not accept. Exactly. Yeah. Well, and I think you charge well, a bit. I think yeah. I'm not an expert on this, but I think if you run sewer in front of the house, you know, when their thing goes down, they would have to tie in versus. They don't have to tie in right away and you charge a betterment fee and that kind of thing. There's a lot to go, but that's again, years down the road. 
a lot of this thought is about five and 10 and being able to develop our economic base. And a lot of the businesses that were there, I just know when the car dealership was there, he was always after me like, oh, we need sewer. And, you know, they don't have any sewer. I think Yankee Candle had, had uh, when they did their buildings, they paid for an extension to get it to work. But, um, and Channing Beach is already on it, or Treehouse is already on there on the unit. But I'm not sure how much else we would get, but there would be some development there. And they would have to kind of cut over to Mill River through the woods there to tie in. So it's tricky. It's definitely tricky. The whole thing is tough to do. So, yeah. So. Oh, yeah. The, the geology of that area is a mess. Um, <laughs> you know, it's pretty much all clay, anywhere from 30 to 300 feet down, depending yeah, on where you live in those down. neighborhoods. Um, it's going to get worse and worse as, you know, the climate continues to change. So, you know, I, I, I live in the same area as, as Trevor and uh, some of, some of um, the folks who live in that area do have raised mounds, mm -hmm. um, but there are some, some folks who have working leach fields now, but are gonna have perk issues as time goes on. And they're either gonna have to um, pony up for um, a raised mound or, or they're gonna have to, you know, hopefully have something to tie in to. So, I think that as climate change becomes more and more of an issue, we're, we're going to have to seriously look at this two-pump solution. Go ahead. Back on the chat. Can you go back there one second? Yep. The right-hand column is just, uh, it seems to me, that why that seems to be the cheapest. It is. It is the cheapest. Up front, it's the cheapest. But long-term, some of us won't have to worry about it, but long-term, um, the, the thought is if you could pull um, a plant off the river, that would be huge. Um, if you didn't have to deal with permitting and you could get rid of the all the stuff that, ha so this is 16 million now in 25, 30 years when you've got to replace the clarifier and all the stuff again, because it's a recycle, you know, it go every so many years you've got to redo it. So down the road, it's going to be a lot more money to redo it. The main issue on that site is that it was built up, they mounded everything up and put it up on top of a hill. So like part of the driveway and part of the building are, are just above the 100 year floodplain. But if we have to put in a clarifier, you know, do this upgrade, we have to find somewhere else in town in that floodplain that's above it and dig a hole so we can like an ice cube in a water, you know, if you, your glass is full, you drop an ice cube in, everything spills out. We can't have that spill out. So we got to dig a hole somewhere else, trying to find a space to do that. Own the property, dig the hole. There's, it's complicated to do both. I mean, the Irene water line is halfway up the door of the, of the plant. So if it, if it floods again, you got to get there on a boat, like a little rowboat to get out there and keep it running. Well, do you have still, more operators too? You still have an operator. I mean, we still would have one operator, head chief, but you have more guys. And the pump stations are much easier to maintain. And really, the issue is that the pipe is like a hundred year lifespan, whereas a clarifier and headworks and all the electrical is is like 30 years, 40 years, something like that. So the other piece of the discussion is that if you look at the old Deerfield plant, there are seven, eight, eight Deerfield residents who use that plant. And the entire rest of the plant is DA, Eagle Brook, the Mint, um, Stork Deerfield, that, uh, Pioneer yep. Valley, Stork Deerfield. Um, and Historic <laughs> Deerfield, right? So it's all nonprofits with like seven people. Mm -hmm. from Deerfield, right? And, and they're on so, their own enterprise fund, so they'd end up paying 75% to them. Like, yeah. Like, or, or I guess... Well, the whole, I mean, the whole, it's all one enterprise fund, so the whole town would be paying that. But the, the nonprofits recognize that it's in their interest to have functional sewer and that mm -hmm. they are, they're very, very engaged in this discussion. Exactly. So... The way I've been thinking recently is that there are a number of options out there. They, um, the nonprofits are very engaged and 
Tim Pilchi was mm -hmm. recently selected yep. as the person who can negotiate with them because Trevor and I both have kids who go to DA, so we can't negotiate with them. Um, but um, so there's so there's that. There's discussion of some sort of mass works grant that could support it. So there's active work towards figuring out a solution for this that doesn't have. Like I, I can't see Deerfield residents voting no. for Deerfield to pay twenty five million dollars right. um, for this, right? That, yep. That's not going to work. For well, but except that I mean, at some point we do because I mean, even if we're gonna, even if we have been promised the money from right. the nonprofits, right? It's this, you know, we have to write. It's the same issue as with the library. We exactly. have to write the check ultimately. Yep. We do. Which yep. means we have to. Approve, the town does have to approve. It would. Right, right. But if you had, yeah, if you had an infrastructure in place where you were also getting a, a large mass works grant and a um, and an equitable participation by nonprofits, and then what we would normally just do if we were a town and had to fix it, and all that combined made it affordable to to push this project off, so no but no other generation has to deal with it for you know seventy five years or a hundred years. It would be a nice. I mean, other than obviously we'd have capital to, you know, replace pumps and that kind of thing. And, and it is, you know, the, some of the pushback is the pumps are big. It's pushing a lot of stuff, um, but they're really, it's pretty basic stuff. It's not clarifier and, you know, testing. And there's not a lot to it. It's just kind of pumping it. And um, so in the long term, it would be more beneficial if we could find an affordable way to make it work. You know, taking that long vision, but but as Julie said, it's difficult to come up with, you know, a plan to figure that out, and and the town's not going to do it if it's not beneficial for the town long term. So, so what I'm wondering is, is there a way to lock in the any promised payments by the yes. old Deerfield nonprofit community before it is presented to the town? Yes, okay. yes, we wouldn't, yeah, we wouldn't present unless we had something and, and our attorneys would work with everybody negotiating to come up with something solid to make something like that happen. Right. So that's old Deerfield debt. Yeah. Um, this is CCI. CCI as a group came up with this vision for the town campus. And you may have seen this before, but the vision is, I don't like reading the thing out loud, but basically a, 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 a campus that's dynamic gathering place and all this stuff, housing for older adults, senior community center for all ages, a library with expanded space, town hall and a renovated historical building, town common upgraded, and then improved parking walk, bikeways, walkways. So this kind of covers all this stuff that we talked about before with shared energy efficient infrastructure, zoning to encourage development and accessibility, energy efficiency, all the, that stuff, right? So that's the, the CCI came up with this vision. Um, yeah, so the, the energy efficient infrastructure, I did not, this is the first I've seen anything about it serving commercial buildings as well. Do you know what they were envisioning? Something like municipal cooling or heating for downtown? Well, I don't think it would be for commercial buildings. It would yeah, be just for our, I, our, I mean, unless we missed that somewhere. It, says, well, it does it say that, like that but I don't, no, you're right. Where? Nobody's talking about okay. that. I don't, I don't think that's, that's where you see, oh, okay. So for so this right oh, for municipal. Here. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe yeah, they're thinking solar or something. I'm not sure. But not not the geothermal. I, I still think that's a long shot, but maybe. Yeah. Yep. All right. So um, I think you guys are familiar with all this. This I presented to the um, the folks who are bidding on the 1888 building to just get them familiar with. So you guys know where all this stuff is, right? You're not going to go through it. Okay. Um, let's skip that. Okay. So then. I sat there and thought about, well, what if we get no grants? What mm -hmm. can we do? So I went through and looked at it. So the first step was refurbishing the 1888 building for the municipal offices, and we're moving forward on that. And that would be done entirely with CPA funds so that it did not increase 
anybody's taxes at all. We would use something that's already there. Um, the second step is fix up the church building for the senior center to use short term. Um, and we have an estimate of about 300,000 and we're gonna use town funds and DA um, to do that. And that is already essentially planned and funded. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, and that's just to get the space that can, when we say short term, we're talking three to yeah. five years, something like that. So not, you know, it's not a year. Um, yeah. And then refurbish, this is my thought, nobody else agrees with me, <laughs> refurbish this building for the senior and community center. Um, and I, my personal opinion is that the layout of this building is perfect I for a senior center. It's like a big open meeting space. And then these, all of these offices are huge. They're, they're right. really pretty big spaces. Mm -hmm. So, We're in a pit. so We're this in can be, center. when GRLA came through, this can be infilled. So mm -hmm. you can fill this up with concrete for like $250,000, right? Um, the complaints about this building can all be fixed with insulation in the roof. Right. Um, because the complaints about the building mm -hmm. are it's too hot, it's too cold, it's drafty, it's, mm -hmm. you know, the, the windows are bad or whatever. Um, so if you replace, and, and this roof, the way the building is designed, most of the building has a flat roof with a membrane on it. It's not structurally sound enough to carry the snow load, so it can't be insulated. So you have to let the heat go through to melt the snow. So if you just replace the roof with a different roof, um, then you get past that problem. Right. So this is all assuming we have no grants, right? right. So, so what are we going to do? Um, and we had GRLA went through, they gave us an estimate um, for repairing this building, including infilling this. They did not address putting a new roof on. I took their estimate and tripled it. Yep. I, <laughs> yeah, that I makes don't sense know. in these days. So, <laughs> like, whatever, it gives us a number. And that took us like four and a half million. So I said, okay, it would be $5 million um, to do that. Um, and if you look at $5 million, that's a 2.6% increase in the tax rate if you, um, if you do a 20-year loan at 3% interest. Mm -hmm. um, so just to give you a feel for what that does to you. And then you go back and refurbish the, ch the church building for real. So everything that's done short term is still useful, but you just go back and, and revisit and um, it, improve it for real. And that gives you a large meeting space, which is what we lose if we move out of this building to the other building. There will not yeah. be a large meeting space in the 1888 building. Um, and then that could be CPA funds. There could be, there's also a, um, one-stop shopping something or other grant system in Massachusetts. And one of the options in that is underutilized buildings or something, um, which this is because I mean, the church is. So, um, and that can be up to a million dollars. So um, if we're successful in getting that grant to refurbish that building, we can do that. And again, that would have no impact on the taxes. So. Go ahead. Sorry, I have a quick question. So these all seem like really great ideas and a good use of all the buildings that we have. Mm -hmm. So if the plan isn't to use this for the, like this is the low cost, you know, solution. Great. I like. Um, so if you're not using this for the senior center, what's happening to this building? I've been meaning to ask this. Tear it down. And then what? They want to build senior housing here oh. and they want it to like, I'm not on board with this, right? Yep. Because, and this is why. I feel like you have a good idea with the senior center here. I feel like I like it, too. too. Um, I think you're on to something. So I just was curious what yep. the other plan uh, I, I So the other the, plan would be to take this down. You build senior housing here, except it would be bigger. So it would extend back, and we would lose that field. And I, I Well, they talked about that is maybe the problem. field goes over to Braeburn, but like we still have the access issue over you, at Braeburn. You have the same access issue, and that field is used 
all the time, spring out and here. Fall. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think it's centrally on our campus. I just hate the thought of that's that. a great. Yeah. Idea. yeah how about, many how many senior housing units would were they thinking of doing? I don't know. Does anybody know? What about the new park for sure. field? Yeah. How many? There are. How many do we need? They need that. Huh? So right now they um, there's soccer. a baseball field at the new park. It's yeah, the new park doesn't have a baseball field, and <laughs> soccer, the high school soccer goes to Hurley all the time. Yep. Um, and they don't, don't have transportation; like kids don't have transportation down there, so that that would give them a field that you don't have that you can walk to. Um, well, we pay the high them. school is a separate district. It is. Yep. So why are the people in the town funding the high school without it being considered separately, I guess? I don't know how to say it. But maybe they should pay rent or something. Yeah, maybe. But if we're, but if yep. we're I mean, if we're talking about we can't do something here because they're going to lose this field, I think we need to, we get $2 million of spending to Put in another field. I think we should consider using it somehow. That's all. There is the other field on the other side, which you know, when we did the when we did the backstop over, everyone's like, "We don't use it. We don't use it. I don't have any money to fix it. We don't use it." So the one next to the elementary, uh, next yes. to the elementary school. That's a softball field, right? Yes. And, um, yeah. And uh, like a little t ball and t ball, t -ball and stuff. Yeah. yeah, it's not really a but it's the space that no one really claims, but I don't know. I kind of like the field where it is. Me too. Yeah. All right. Maybe we should ask recreation. To... We should yeah, ask I, recreation. I know how the recreation committee feels about it. Yeah. 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 yeah, I don't think that, that they're in favor of getting rid of this field here. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, that's the last I heard from last time. I'm not, I could do a more thorough research. <laughs> so I don't I don't remember the argument for the new the new field. Um, yeah, there was some the, so it's a, like a bandstand and a other stuff too. I believe right? it was for it's soccer, just, right? Oh yeah. the, uh, the, the, the park. Yeah, yeah the that'll park. be just that'll be just soccer. And I think there's a basketball court there too. Um, oh, nice. and um, Maybe pickleball. What <laughs> other options are there for senior housing locations? Well, you can do, um, I'm not on that committee, but I, I know that they were looking at little pocket things here and there, like in town, can can we, you know, do some things like that? Um, you know, I think and it's a Cumbies Braeburn, place, can you put something access. there? Or, yeah, or Braeburn, we always wanted to do it there. It was just getting at, we were hoping that a house came up for sale on Main Street and we could get access to that field, um, but I don't know if that'll ever happen. But. So for the senior housing, would that be um, privately developed or would that be town owned? Privately owned? developed, R R is it RDA? Is that who, I, I always say RDA, but I'm, it's uh, the entity that did Sundle and they, yeah, they would, they would build it, manage it. And um, so yeah, we don't would, have any ownership at all? No, or the none. Okay. And it's a, I think it's a taxable entity, correct? Yeah, yeah, that's my understanding. Mm -hmm. yeah. But that it seems like would also then be a, a, that people might find it might not favor selling, you know, Memorial Field for private development. True. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, that's a good point. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Um, So this stuff, we would be seeking grant funding to do. Um, the infrastructure stuff, energy smart improvements, the senior housing, upgrading, expanding the library, which has already come through. Um, and then, so everybody's familiar with the new addition to the 1888 building <laughs> idea, right? Is that, we'll go through that. So if we can get some huge grant, then um, and which, which every bunch of people are actively pursuing, 
then the vision is to build a new addition to the 1888 building, which would be a little, actually even a little bit bigger than the current building. It would be two stories. The first story would be a senior center, a brand new senior center. The second story would be additional town hall offices. Um, and it would be, you have the 1888 building. Part of the project we're doing right now is a glass and um, enclosed well, it may not be glass, but a, a stair tower and elevator tower that will be an addition on the back of that building. And that would be built so that the other building would meet up to it and that elevator would provide elevator to both buildings. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? You would? Okay. Is there a picture? Oh, there's a picture there. somewhere. I'll bring it up. For Is the building that you're talking about the, the um, new building behind it? Yeah. That's the vision. So, no. oh, so it sounds like this is tower that we need. And that's from this road over here. That's looking yeah. at it from the bank yeah. essentially. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can I show that to David? Oh, can you see it, David? Oh, this is paper. Yeah. Vanna White. <laughs> But it sounds like there's two thoughts about where a senior center is going to go. 1888 right. building or here. Right. Or, the, or also the church, because that, that was, I believe, why the town bought it in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> it was donated to the town. Okay, the but if was. I remember, I dimly recall that that was sort of the justification is, oh, we can use it for the senior center. So, yes, there is. And if we were, so here's my opinion. That new building is going to cost $15, $20 million. And I have no interest in spending $20 million of town funding on a new building unless we get $18 million, million <laughs> worth of grant funding or something, right? And in my opinion, I don't think it's a good use when we have a viable alternative that would cost us a heck of a lot less. Mm -hmm. It would be, I mean, it would be lovely, I'm sure, to have sure. a brand new building with a brand new senior center. That that'd be fantastic if we can get grant funding to do it. But in my opinion, we shouldn't. So. Hey, Julie, can I ask a question? Yes. Sorry, um, I was just curious, and I'm sorry if I'm behind on this, but the 1888 building yep. that we're talking about, sort of um, a lot of sort of done deal type stuff at town meeting this year when we, I think, voted on a sort of quick, sort of there was a supplemental like 500 and something thousand dollars in change. Um, and I, my memory was that that was sort of to do some engineering and feasibility studies around whether or not it would be used for all these purposes. So is that wrong? Or is it, was that money that was put forward to actually like, we know it's all solid and viable and these are like just, plans that are going to be developed. I guess, I guess my question is, is the 1888 building definitely um, going to be, we know it's viable to be restored and used for all these purposes, or was that that we already put money to sort of still explore that possibility? There's some exploration still to be done. So it was $475,000 um, that will cover um, Exactly what you just said. So, so okay. the one, the only question we had, um, let me start over. GRLA came through and did a building assessment. They looked at that building. They recommended refurbishment of that building. So we have one architectural mm -hmm. engineering firm that has assessed the building and considers it to be a, a sound building that would be useful um, going forward, right? So that's one assessment. We had a, um, um, then we had a professor from UMass come with a student project and they looked at that building um, and it's, I don't remember the program, but it's essentially building, trades is the wrong word, but it's along those lines. It's, it's like people who look at buildings for HVAC and drainage and mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. kind of system. So they're they're not engineers, but they're not like tradespeople either. They're they're sort of in between looking at use of buildings. That's the type of program that he does. 
Um, and when they came and looked at the building, um, his opinion was that the bricks in the building are a more porous type of brick that is likely to rapidly deteriorate. Um, and he was not in favor of refurbishing that building without dealing with this potentially deteriorated brick. Mm -hmm. And um, just a sec. Sure. And then, okay. And then we had um, Corpita, Corpita, mm -hmm. what's his first name? Paul Corpita. Paul Corpita came through and he um, worked on that building doing some, he didn't repoint the whole building, but he just did the repairs that were necessary to fix that. While we were, he was here, I mean, that's what he does for a living. He's a, mm -hmm. a brick mason. And yeah. um, we asked him his opinion and he thought the building looked like it was in really good shape, that it was um, sound, that there was no, like if you look at the building, all the lines are straight. It's not deteriorating or anything. Um, the concern is that if it is indeed porous and you insulate it from the inside and the brick gets wet, then um, it, you won't have the heat coming from the inside to keep it warm. And so you'll have freeze thaw down deep into the wall in the building. And instead of just having spalling on the outside, you have spalling through the whole depth of the building because it is um, entirely brick. It doesn't have uh, like rebar or anything in it. It's old enough that it's just solid brick. Um, and if you did that, the building would fall down, right? So that, that would be really bad. Um, so, but what you do, the solution to this is you take a core sample of the building and you can test the brick and you can definitively decide if that is indeed a problem. So we have two people who say it's not a problem, one person who says it is a problem, and we have a way to determine whether or not that's true. And then if it is true, um, the what you do, there, there's, you just have to work around it. So um, the, the work around is you design the, um, like all the overhangs and everything that, that to route the water away from the building. You put something along the base that, um, it, that the problems that we're seeing is right around the base where the water drips and hits the mm -hmm. ground and bounces up and deteriorates the building. So you put something around the base that is essentially a barrier to that. Um, and you can also, um, you can insulate, you can not insulate as much. So you still have some heat coming out or you can insulate, but leave a gap and vent the gap. So that keeps it um, drier. And it does. So there, there are workarounds, but it has to be done. So first thing you do is the core sample, decide if you, if you have a problem. And then if you do, you deal with it, right? So, so sorry, Dave. So <laughs> 20 minutes later, back to your question. What the funding is that 475 to do is to pay for an over, owner's project manager um, who is somebody who watches out for our interests. And, and it, it's a engineering, architecture, experienced person um, or firm actually who watches out for Deerfield's interest. We then hire an architectural firm and a historical consultant who will give us a set of plans and a solid estimate so that we can go to town meeting next spring with a solid estimate and a proposal for moving forward for doing the actual repairs. Um, there was something else that I had to say, but I lost it. I don't remember. Go for it. The one thing I wanted to say was, and what I had taken away, and I could be wrong about this too, was CCI has been moving forward with this zero net energy, no, you know, you could light a match and heat the place. Um, that, that building does not lend itself to that thinking it wasn't built for that design because of the brick structure and the way that it there is no um i mean the whole idea is that you want to heat the inside of that building and that heat has to get to all the way to the outside to dry the brick out otherwise if you make it a net zero building and insulate it like crazy inside it just puts the brick 
out in the cold, it never thaws out and it just busts and falls apart. I think that was really, and, and so if we weren't wrapping if it we in glass problem, right. or if you aren't um, insulating it, um, I think, you know, if you don't insulate it heavily or try for a net zero or something, I think we would be fine because it is a good building. It's lasted a hundred years or more. And, um, it, but trying to go with a net zero, or you could get somewhere to it, like insulate some of it, but it can't be what they were trying to envision with a net zero, at least from my understanding, but it, the cores will help answer a lot of that for sure. Are you sorry Answers. you asked? Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 that's helpful. <laughs> All right. Um, so back to our list of projects, needs, wants, whatever. Um, so this budget plan or whatever, this low cost baseline with no grants takes care of everything. Oh, the green stuff here is already funded. South Deerfield, Town Park, Town Common, Economic Relight, the, the Leary Lot. Then we take care of the improving the town hall office space and the senior community center by refurbishing this building, refurbishing the 1888 building and the church. Um, and that leaves the rest of this stuff to seek grant funding to um, be able to do. And the then library the expansion though, we can't seek more grant funding for that, can we? Right, right. So right. this was, I actually wrote this before we got that oh, oh, grant. So, so that's, that's, the, that's the grant it has already been okay. seeked, sought, but what's the yeah, essence of seek? <laughs> I was thinking that they wouldn't allow it though, right? Because we have to I mean, is that part of this? I don't know that much about that grant, but is that part of the stipulation of the grant? Is that the town has to cover the other half? Well, yeah, except that the they other don't. half has grown considerably. Yeah, yeah, which is now the other two thirds. <laughs> right. So I don't know that they would be able okay. to have a, I mean, I think we could probably actually make like a legal argument that if the town is meeting half, the, is matching what they're paying, then they can't object to us looking for grants to be over it. Uh, so there might be some questions I mean, about whether whether we, we, we can may find need to have actual lawyers to, to supplement that. Okay. All right. Um, oh, and there's the stuff that we have to do. Okay. Um, if we look at debt and debt service, we're already committed to the elementary school roof, the highway garage, and the South Deerfield wastewater treatment plant. Um, and I used for, um, oh, that comment doesn't really apply to this, but whatever. Um, so this is what we have. If you look forward at just that, um, those three loans, this is what we will have for debt each year um, right here. And then this will be, this will be our debt service just for those, um, and this may have been before you looked at it, Brenda, so it may not be the exact numbers that you have, um, but it's yeah. it's in the right ballpark. Um, so that's kind of what we're looking at for debt service. And we're probably around 3% or so of that 5% limit, roughly, approximately? Yep. yep. With, this, with these numbers. We're, we're just, no, uh, so right. our debt limit is about yeah, forty million. So right. we're looking at about we're about half. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So two and a half percent, I guess. Two point three. Yeah, which is continually it gets better without new debt. Right. Yeah, because we pay it off right. over time, <laughs> and hopefully our valuation goes up too. True. Right. right. Yeah. Good point. So, um, okay. So then and this is. Go ahead, Dave. I'm sorry, to, it was a question. It goes back to the beginning of what you were talking about tonight, but since you just touched on it again, I'm gonna ask my question now. This business of the 5% um, of a community's um, equalized valuation. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I've got two screens going, so I'm not looking at you. There we go. Um, does that include the just the valuation of the properties that are actually paying taxes? Or does that in, does the total valuation include all of our nonprofits who basically aren't paying an assessed value tax? I'm pretty sure it's just properties that pay taxes. 
I did, I did ask Karen that question. She said that it was just the properties that pay the taxes. Okay. Kind of in a town like ours, it certainly is, um, makes a big difference to that 5%. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It does. All right. Thanks. Um, so if we, our debt ceiling is at about $40 million. Um, and so what I just did was look at, okay, if we borrowed the rest of that, what does that mean? Um, so it, you know, and, and this is each year, um, this is not cumulative. So, which I'll explain in a minute. So, but if you remember, like, we had 21 and a half million in, in FY 2024. So if we borrowed that extra 18 and a half million and I just, I picked mm -hmm. something. Yeah. So I assumed a 20 year ban at 3% interest. Um, and then um, assumed a prop two and a half increase of two and a half percent each year. So if we borrowed that 18 and a half million our debt service would be 1.9 million, which is over um, our 10% value. And if we borrowed that and we were paying 1.9 million, that would be a 10% increase over last year's taxes. So this is the baseline is FY 2023 tax rate mm -hmm. of 15.17, right? So this is not saying that we would increase 10% and then 10% again the next year and the next year and the next year, right? It, it's, um, it's just saying if we borrow 22 million in 2029, that would be 12% of, you know, our tax increase would be 12% of what it was last year. I don't, I'm not sure I totally followed. You said it, it, I thought you said it wasn't cumulative, but then it sounds like- It's not, yeah, it's not what, cumulative. The, the percentages are cumulative. Can you nope. Maybe just so, one more time. Um, all this is saying <laughs> is like, if if next year we borrowed that eighteen and a half million uh -huh. and we got this twenty year ban at three percent interest, then we would our debt service for that eighteen and a half million would be one point nine oh, million, oh. and that would be a ten percent increase over last year's taxes. Okay. If we didn't do that, and instead in twenty twenty nine we borrowed twenty two point three million, um, okay. which is what we would have available to borrow. It would be 3.1 million of debt service per year, and that would be 12% of last year's. Okay. Thank you. So it's, it, it depends on what year you go out to borrow, borrow this. Yeah. It's not that you're borrowing it every year. Kind right, of right, right. What year right. you're going to go it's borrow? Not it. yep. no, it's not a very good. It's helpful though. Not, it but right, but you, but you it's picked something. You about. picked. You put in each year if we were to borrow okay. basically our maximum. Right. Yes. In any one of those years. Correct. Right. Okay. Right. Right. That's an excellent as listening. compared to <laughs> been able as to compared to it. now. <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. What's a ban? It's, it's a short term no. It's, it's like a loan. Like a loan for um bond for, anticipation. Okay. Which you can't do for twenty years, right? You you can only do it for ten. Ten. Ten is the maximum. Okay. So there's another fallacy. Like the school roof is a ban. It's based on the bond issuance cost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So then I just said, well, what, what if we wanted to borrow $5 million, what would that do to us instead of this 18 million <laughs> or whatever, assuming 3% interest and a 20 year payback is, it would be 336,000 a year, which is a 2.64% increase over this year's tax. Mm -hmm just as a number to have to think about. Um, oh, this we've seen before, this is out of the financial indicators last year. Um, so if we look at our population, our population has been essentially steady since 1980, since 1990. We've been right around 5,000 for 30 years. Um, and then, but if you look at our age percentage, um, it's, the same people since 19. So just getting older. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Much exactly. Which means so, it's a place people come and stay. And yes, right? they yeah. do. Yeah. They do. And, and hard to so, buy in. And, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, having less exactly. and less children. Especially with our taxes. <laughs> so what yeah. does that mean? But the kids aren't dropping off as fast no, as the. No. So I don't, I don't know what's up with that. But, um, um, 
Anyways, that's just another something to think about. So yeah, that's it. All right. Very nice. Very nice. So well it's interesting. Yeah. Um, I'm just I just have like a I'm just pontificating, but a lot of these projects are designed or intended to you know, Im improve the community for the people that are here, but the borrowing to pay for them would simultaneously box out the people who are here from being able to stay here, right? True. So right. we need to think exactly. about who are we serving mm -hmm. with these projects and what is the capacity of those people? Because I'm right. thinking about the senior center and, and mm -hmm. the community supports up in the library and Right. These are services, really, when it comes down to it, sure. entities right. that are designed to support folks who I can go, I, I'm privileged, I can go to the library, I can get support, right? Like, yeah. if I don't have a community center in this town, I can get one somewhere else. But yep. but those are also the, the same people who are going to really feel the tax increase. It's ironic mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it's frustrating. Yeah, Good. assuming you do all the borrowing, it's like we built all these things, and congratulations, you can't afford to live here now. Yeah, yeah, right. exactly. But, but we built them for you. Yeah, and, right. and generally, you're... And, and this is not just a theoretical thing. I, right. I remember yeah. reading that that's been a serious issue in cities like Austin, where yeah. you know people are complaining that like I I I don't understand. I voted for all these nice things, and now I can't afford to stay here. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> and then you have. It, it is it you know generally a town also looks as a planning entity looks at what do we have for growth where can we put right. new housing to attract younger families to a do but we're all apr up to here so there really is no i mean i don't know of any tracts of land that we could look at for building and karen always says you're building homes it's a drain but you have to have space for these people whether it's a home, and maybe it's not <coughs> homes as what you used to think of them, but workforce housing or some way to afford <coughs> so people can buy in and raise their families and uh, pay taxes. But you really don't get a lot of tax money out of a workforce housing, right? So mm -hmm. you need to bring in people with good paying jobs who are paying six or seven thousand, eight thousand in taxes a year to be able to support this stuff, families raising families and you know, you don't afford all of these projects on senior housing and workforce housing. It just right. doesn't so work. Sorry. It's a bad, you know, yeah. equation. It'd be nice to support all of them. But again, the services, a lot of times, well, if you look a hundred years ago, you had, I don't know if it's Chelsea, Chauncey Tilton or Childs or Fields or, you know, Forbes or somebody, there, there was wealthy benefactors who would say, <laughs> Here's a hundred thousand dollars, which was like a million dollars, and this is to set up to help um, indigents or to produce. Here, here's my library of all the books I've accumulated of my whole career of traveling the world, and here it is to the general public to use. And nowadays, that's not really what happens. Everybody has to pay money for a library, and it's it's. Um, it's all of us that pay for it instead of one wealthy donor that kind of puts money ahead to do that. So just dynamics have changed in a hundred years and how we well, do one things. Thing, I mean, there's nobody, I don't think of, you know, billionaire level wealth in Deerfield yeah. who could endow something anymore. It, it used to be, you know, the, you know, Rich people all live in New York now. Yeah, it used to be Mr. You know, Mr. Kittredge. You know, and he, he would, you know, he would. Here's an ambulance, or he, you know, he would do different things. And I think, had he lived in town and lived longer, maybe, and got to a point where he was um, turning over his estate, kind of thing, that people would leave something to a town. But you're right; a lot of people are either in. Silicon Valley or New York or whatever. It's not, they're not in Deerfield. Well, and not to say that there's no benefit to, you know, Correct. improving a town for folks who can't afford it. Absolutely. But, um, but for me, it's not the most important thing. I want to make sure that the town has you know, my, my values. I want the town to have what it needs for the people who live in the town to thrive. Yep. 
Yeah. Somebody made a very interesting comment. I, I, it really hit home to me. I, I was talking to an older person and she said, why don't you do something for all the seniors in town and keep the taxes down mm -hmm. instead of... Right. Yeah, because they're fixed income. Yeah. They're not, they don't have earning capacity coming forward. Well, that's depressing. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so I mean, there's Carolyn especially is actively campaigning to, and Denise Mason is working with her to um, try and get grant funding, um, and they're reaching out. You guys are reaching out to the. Um, there's a lot of state ARPA money. Is that the? The state yeah. ARPA and infrastructure yeah. money. Yeah. And so we're not seeing a lot of that infrastructure money yeah. out here. But, um, so, I mean, I, like, if somebody can get a grant that pays for the building, I am all for it. That's yeah. fantastic. Right. But, right. Um, I, I, so I guess I'll just throw it open to discussion. I, I didn't have an end, like, mm -hmm. I don't have a vision right now. So I feel like Finance Committee should have an opinion on debt, um, but I don't know what that opinion should be, whether it should be just case by case as these things come up. I mean, we're going to have to think about the library and we're going to have to vote on some sort of, well, you know, do we support or not support the library this the, fall? The, the fact of the matter is, I mean, it seems to me that the town, like as a town, can take on quite a bit more debt. Um, but the impact that that has on the taxes, which is what the people in town actually will feel, right? Like that's the value balance. And so we've in the past we've talked about how do we want to communicate to um you know to people and I know Skip was always about like you know at town meeting let's do it but I think I'm wondering if we maybe need to think of a way to do a communication you know or series of communications or just to make sure that that folks are informed about what the impact will be because the potentially printed mass mailings that always works yeah right I know I know I open those <laughs> um but I mean, and I don't know the best way to, to do that, but like, I think this time of year is a better time to try to communicate what yeah. is the value balance. Right. Because I don't want to paternalistically decide that like, we can afford this mm -hmm. or we can't afford that because it's my, it's most important to me. Yeah. I love a, a new library, but like I said, I'm not going to get bumped out of town because of my taxes. Right. It's, I mean, remember that the ultimately, yes, the town d decides and, you know, they're all grown ups. Um, but it's a lot of complicated information. Yeah. But so, yeah, our, that's sort of our role is we look at the information and, and sort of, and, you know, we're, we're, we're an advisory board. We don't have any exact authority. <laughs> right. right. Let's, let, let's figure out maybe how to translate costs and benefits, you know. Um, I do think Julie's you know, just her, um, yeah. you taking over the chair has made a huge difference on how the communication and how the meetings come out. Mm -hmm. And like, just this tonight, just yeah. having a conversation, but yeah, you know, yeah, so exactly. how do we, how do we bring the public into it? Is it a, you know, a library? Can we afford it night? And that will bring everybody out and then just say, look, we're not for or against the thing. Let's just have a discussion. And you go through that process again, and people kind of have a, um, or, or I, I don't know, somehow we've got to get the people in a chair, mm -hmm. a button a chair to go sit and take in this very well done presentation of what you've put together and all this board has done over the last year or two. It's really been impressive and it, it, it's easy to understand. And as you talk about your feelings and John got some, you know, everybody kind of has a discussion and then we hear from the public, what are they? Thinking right. about well, because otherwise, what happens is it's the people who have a strong opinion, yeah, you know, who are who already know what they know, who who show up, and everybody else just has to deal with it. Right. And I think, I mean, for me, that's what's un uncomfortable is because there's a lot of awesome projects. Yeah, like none of them are bad. <laughs> um, <coughs> and people, what people have to hear a message seven times or whatever before yes. they actually noticed it mm -hmm. um you know and if we make a real effort i don't feel as bad at the end of it if people you yeah. know I mean, you always have somebody at town meeting who says that's the first i ever heard of it you know mm -hmm. and we've been having sure. meetings all year but um <laughs> for me that's the takeaway is is we can afford actually quite a bit 
but the cost is is that that tax burden and um and it's not just like yeah. you can borrow up to that five percent but the sewer has gone up like i'm not mm -hmm. on sewer so i don't see it yeah. but the sewer has gone up i think a lot yeah in yeah, the past sorry. couple of years and yep. so people who are on sewer are seeing right. you know the taxes have gone up whatever that 40 percent in yep. 10 years right. plus the sewer right Yep. Plus, right, and so those and of us on you, septic aren't seeing those things. Yeah. No one was seeing the 25%, but we actually don't, I mean, we see it a little bit, but it's 25% for the capital is small in our tax bill versus yeah, right. the sewer user are paying like 85% because right. they're paying that 75 in the user fee plus the plus 25 the, yeah. plus the, I mean, and that's all on top of their actual, you know, what it costs to run it for the year. You know, that, that's which is a, going up too because up all to, of a sudden salaries are, are going up and inflation is going up. Yeah, trying to find so people. it's not just absolutely. That. Can I jump in for a second? Yeah, please. Yeah. Sorry, it's a great conversation. I'm sorry I'm not there because, um, but I but I am hearing you all. Um, I mean, one thing just to sort of take a slightly different approach is that it's very important that we invest in our community. Um, and one of the things I think that's gone on in Deerfield, as much as we're all invested in it and love it, is that there has been some neglect, I would suggest, over the years. Uh, and some of these um, infrastructure things that are, are catching up with us now are, you know, part of what's causing, um, uh, you know, the funding crunch that we're seeing, you know, with, with the big ticket items. But um, another thing that I think we're confronted with, um, which is maybe causing some dissonance for some people, is all of a sudden there's a lot of talk about a lot of projects. Mm -hmm. And I think, Julie, what, what you're doing really well here, and maybe this is something the committee can sort of do to help the discussion, is to try to reflect sort of to people like what a, what a, what a pipeline is and, and, and how things are ordered um because some of the things that are talked about are clearly suddenly sort of thrown into the mix but there really hasn't been the um you know all the planning and the input and the necessary things um for that project to to you know to be put in the quote unquote pipeline um so that's I mean, that's, that's how I would just say, suggest that all of these things clearly probably can't be done all at once unless there are some terrific um grants that are that are going to come through um, but we've you know for those of us who have only lived here 20 22 years some of these projects we've heard about for a long long time some of them have come along and people have sort of taken it by the horns and have you know done a lot to get things ready to 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 get to get moving on uh, but julie you've created some options here which would probably make some people think in terms of cost savings and and what to do with um, with certain buildings but um, but I, I, you know, you know, the town f meeting folks really have to have to vote on this. And yes, we should be presenting um, more clear, I think, options for everybody. But just that sense of of pipeline of things, um, you yeah, know, is I think I agree it, that for one thing that would also cut down on the sort of sense of surprise. Yeah, and this is something which keeps coming up: the feeling that somebody is trying to put something over on the town. Yeah. <laughs> You know, for a lot of townsfolk, they hadn't heard anything about this, and suddenly here's somebody with a big elaborate plan and a PowerPoint presentation and a, a you know, a, a model and everything. And there's this, and you have to decide tonight. <laughs> and yeah. I think a lot of people have this feeling that you know, they're being. You know, they, they. I mean, if you talk to people, you know, there's always this sense of you know, the they, whoever they are, which you know, I might yeah. be us for all I know. You know, or, or whereas it's like, okay, we're going to have to do this in five years, and so this is the planning process. Would the something on the town website be a help, like just a big, a page of just upcoming projects and stuff we're working on? I mean, it's like a great marketing campaign. You need to do your field now, and you need to do send a John Petrick message, and you know. Yeah. And so I went to a thing this summer that was uh, like training session for people on finance committees, I guess. And the guy who spoke was from a town and they have a 20 year plan. Mm. So they have a five year plan CIPC, which we have, but they also have 
a 20 year building plan. Mm -hmm. um, and I would nice. love okay. to get that together also. Mm -hmm. So we keep the five year plan and mm -hmm. the, the very thorough process that CIPC does, but we have a, a rougher 20 year mm -hmm. plan. And we've priority. started yeah. poking at that in town building advisory, but we've been kind of busy and we haven't made the progress that I had hoped to where we say things like, okay, we're going to need a new roof on this building mm -hmm. in 2032 and we're going to yep. need a new whatever boiler in this building. And you just kind of lay that stuff out. So you see the big picture stuff yep. coming at you. So mm -hmm. when it gets to the five-year plan, you've kind of seen it coming for a few years. And when yep. it gets to the year, we can say, oh yeah, we talked about that last year. It was on yep. the CIPC. And, yep. you know, but, um, and I think some of these projects are you know that some of this noise is also aspirational like we're going to do this addition and we're going to do because it's like you you have to have this song and dance when representatives come and you're like oh we're going to do this and a geothermal and we're going to put this addition on and we're going to do that and that and that and it's like it's to it's to kind of create a story so that there is like interest at the state to go oh well he here's a grant program but i think they're more on that 10 to 20 year thing. And I like Julie's idea of the, okay, this is, this is in green, this is in blue. These are the, the really upcoming things that are like, you need to decide on a library by January. You need to, you know, figure out the sewer by then, or, or maybe not, but just have some plan going forward. And, you know, a couple of things that we can control, we can talk about what we're doing and some of the stuff may just fall off and never happen. Well, we have some, I mean, we have some amazing vision right now. I think the yeah. town, which I haven't been here as long as probably everybody else, but it's, it's nice to see these, these things. And I think they're all good, but the progress is obviously it's going to have to be incremental. Measure. It's going to have better. to be piece by yeah. piece. A, a long-term plan would also avoid the issue of things happening at the same time rather than sequentially because right, right, right. i mean a, a lot of our issues right now uh, you know the library would not be a problem if it if had we happened five years right ago now, right, right. Yeah. right or if we had yeah. done the sewer five years ago or if yeah, we could do the could have done the library before the cost of construction well, yeah. right yeah. that would that's yeah. like that whole thing but, but the library is also a good example of something where um it's much farther along uh, yeah. and organized than any of the other projects right in the sense that they have actually acquired a grant, uh, we, they, they have plans, they have the architects in place, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. is, is this some um, idea of debt load, um, easily accessible information to see how we compare with other towns? Because I think that's another thing that folks, um, you know, can sort of cope with in their minds about how we're doing versus other towns. You know, are we stretching the, the bounds of sort of you know, municipal finance, or are we in a better place? I mean, I think in the general census from the presentation is we're in a good good place, um, but is that something that, you know, that we can compare with our neighboring towns or, you know, Greenfield or, you know, so I'm just, it'd just be another data point that would be interesting in our future kind of uh, presentations to more public audiences. Um, let me find Zoom again. Do you guys see that? It's probably too small to see. It's too small to see. Yeah. Oh. I can see it. I mean, I see that you put a chart up. <laughs> All right. Is yeah, it, it does. This is high, highlighted. Oh, uh, right. there it is. So this is, do you remember we did the comparison? Yeah. And so Dave, you can go online. There's a website and you can download. It's wonderful. You download all the data for all the towns in the entire state, right? Um, but you can also screen the data and you can pick a subset of it. So this section is towns, I've forgotten, Exactly. Does it say? Oh, it does right down here. So these are, this is what we screened it for. Um, we tried to get similar towns. And so similar towns were towns of population between 3,000 and 7,000, income per capita between 30,000 30, and 55,000, and EQV equivalent value 
um, equalized value per capita between 110 and 200,000. You can see in the right hand column down here, right here, that's what Deerfield's numbers are. So these are supposedly similar. I, we just, I just pick stuff, right? I, I didn't know. So um, these are similar towns. And then if you go up here, this is the highlighted one is Deerfield. And it gives you like population, single family tax bill, income per capita. Um, I can't see what that is. <laughs> um, EQV per capita. So this is just sort of the, almost the screening criteria. The interesting one is uh, total road miles. We've got more road miles than anybody. But, um, but then you look down here and we have, here's debt service as a percent of budget. So we were 6% last year. And this is the, this row right here is our rank. Mm -hmm. So out of, I think there's what, there's 17 total towns. We have the fifth highest debt service as a percent of budget. And so we can do this for Franklin County. We can do this for the whole state. We can do this for some subset um, if we want to. And I think somewhere we have total Um, I don't know. It, it's been a while since I looked at this. I didn't, um, we, I'm sure I can get total debt. The other thing to remember about this is also that it's, um, our budget doesn't include fire department mm -hmm. and almost all the other towns do include fire department. Um, so it's not necessarily. So uh, yeah, this tax rate includes the fire department, but the rest of it doesn't. So that's the only number that we changed right here, this tax rate that includes the South Deerfield fire and water. Um, it's a real, the fire department's a real lack of transparency, but I know that there, there are a couple matter other to towns fix. that do it, but not very many, like yeah. maybe five total in the state or something. Yeah, and try, try figuring out when those meetings are they're <laughs> technically open, but they're they're pretty I don't know secret. Where it's to. Yeah, we have to come to town hall, right? <laughs> it's probably on the website somewhere. But. but anyways, I can send this out to everybody too if you want to look at it, and I can send you the link for the um where to play with the data. Um, Were you hoping to have um, the finance committee come out of this with a recommendation of priorities and plan? No, or? I was thinking more that we would have some sort of discussion about what we should do. Like, like yeah. should we come up with an overall plan? Should we? So I, I think I haven't been taking notes. We want some sort of info session, right? I, for the public, you mean? For the public. Yeah, absolutely. I, I feel like this committee could come up with a prioritization plan and we might not all agree. It might not be consensus, but we could certainly vote and it would be civilized and we'd be able to, we'd be able, the committee would be able to recommend prioritization. At this point, I feel like the most important piece is the, the communication of all the work that we've been doing with the people who are invested in these projects. Um, I don't know, maybe. How you get them to right. be interested. In well, I mean, it's the people who are interested in, in any one of these projects who have a special interest in it, right? Like, I don't know. I would think anybody who's not paying attention at all isn't going to want to listen to this, but I don't know. Um, I mean, it's like a marketing plan is that was what we need. It's like a way to make it available and um, I almost wonder if having an info session, recording it, sharing it on, you know, the website, Facebook, sending mailings, like, you know, it depends how much we, we want to invest, but. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know that a marketing plan is the best way to describe it, because yeah. to some extent, that's, that's the job of whoever's project it is. Well, to advocate we, for right, the project. We should be more like consumer reports. Yeah, or something. right, yeah. <clears throat> right, we're not selling something, but we, we're uh, trying to get people to understand the information. Um, 
seems, seems to me it's hard to do this stuff. Um, I mean, obviously, I think this is a public meeting, um, as are many other meetings in town. And uh, if people go to them, they go to them. And if they want to see what's going on, they can. Um, and while I think it's a great thing to do to try to be more public and educate folks about things, I worry about um, doing it too far away from when sort of some kind of decision needs to be made or voted on. Um, and it seems like it would be more effective use of time to to think to think about things that way. I think if we just suddenly focused on putting something together and talking to the town about all these projects, it could be very confusing, especially since I think we also don't know exactly um, you know what's what's actually going to come from all these various proposals. So that that would be my worry, just that we could create more. Um, more discord um, because we don't really have concrete things to to say are in the pipeline that need to be voted on or approved as opposed to just all these ideas for the center of town and and you know some of this stuff has it's been pretty public and i've seen things in the recorder you know newspaper about it um anyway, that's just my thought that we it, that our the discipline that we're putting into this stuff uh, it is going to be more relevant when when there's a closer to a decision that is needing to be made. So my, oh, oh, my, my concern, I think, is this is a very different committee and it's functioning in a very different way than it did a few years ago. Um, and I, I think that the, fine, the Deerfield Finance Committee has a reputation for showing up and saying no we don't support this and then the town decides does it anyway, does it anyway or decides that it's a, you know that the committee isn't well thought out or well communicated or, or representing the interests of the whole town it, i mean i know that that had had been you know a few years ago when i moved to town that was my impression um, that's why i wanted to join the committee um because i wanted to know that the committee was representing you know the the interests of more people in town than just those seven and and so i think for me i'm i'm part of it for me is i'm i'm thinking about like if we were and i think it'd be totally appropriate for the finance committee to just make a set of recommendations and priorities you know and have like an if this then that and we you know we think that we should do these things my fear is that with the history um of the the committee and the way that we've worked with the select board in the past, which is improving, I think, and the way we've worked with the town admin in the past, like my fear is that we just wouldn't be heard. Sure. Um, and granted, it's changed, so maybe I don't need to be so worried about that. But so there will be a vote this fall on the library, right? At some yeah, town and meeting the and then special. followed by um and the town meeting is going to be late october or something right is that right so if we did something so i, I feel like it's useful even though the library is the only thing that, that will be voted at that it's a big vote, thing i think it would be useful to have some background right so have a, a, a a presentation on what is debt limit, what is debt service, what has our, you know, our, our trend been. I, I like the idea of comparing to other towns and seeing mm -hmm. what other things. So give them that background. Mm -hmm. But I think they also need the background of all of the projects that are being talked about and if how we, you know, we funded these ones and these are being talked about. So if we vote the library now that what your taxes will may look like be and... the right answer this is the impact on your taxes and these are the other things that are being talked about so um yeah. that we might not have the capacity to do later right right maybe we should not include things that are already funded and not include some of the smaller projects so Make it a little simpler. Yeah, Keep this is pretty. Yeah, you're right. This is extensive. Um, I, 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 forgive me for asking, but I thought there were going to be a couple of other things that were going to come up 
the fall special town meeting. Oh, there, there, but none there'll of these There'll be big articles. Projects. Yeah. There okay. will be other. Yeah, right. other articles, but not. Um, no major expenditures or anything. No, not that I can think of. Okay. I mean, uh, we'll have to see where free cash is and, you know, look at our capital needs if we can do anything or not. <clears throat> yeah. Julia, I mean, I think that sounds, that makes total sense. Um, and I think that the committee would be kind of either asked or tasked uh, with providing that kind of information as that um, process or decision approaches. So certainly might be a good idea for us to start thinking about how we would go about presenting that. Because of course, the committee of course would have to have some kind of consensus, I assume, um, in terms of coming up with a pre you know, presentation. Um, exactly. Well, consensus for an opinion on the presentation, I think, yeah, we, well, I guess you also need consensus on that, but some of that educational component absolutely is a, a great idea for people to be aware of. They can do with it what they will. Or... And maybe we update financial indicators before that meeting, and then we can present that somehow. You don't want to present too much. Um, yeah, right. Let's go yeah, on. that's a difficult problem. One thing that this committee as very tangible can do ahead of that meeting is make it clear what the tax rate looks like before and after funding the library project. Yeah. Right. That's, that's like that's, bite size. Yes. Um, Absolutely. Straightforward. Right. Yeah. Not just the tax rate, tax rate, but the total dollars on the average value house. I think I yep. remember seeing that being a few hundred dollars per household yeah. for yeah. the duration of the time that we have to pay um, whatever is not being matched by the um, grant that we're getting. So it is, it is it's in there. It's significant for depending on what kind of households you're talking about. Right, right. And then if there's known upcoming borrowing, right, like related, I mean, sewer we've already yeah, done. Well, the sewer yeah. we've already, yeah. yeah. Well, except for old people. Well, we've borrowed all of the additional six million. Yeah, so I mean, if there's any other known pieces that are coming that haven't already been incorporated, and I should know after watching and listening to you explain all of this, but I also already can't remember. Um, this is a lot of pieces. Yeah, right, so, we, so we just, we voted 3 million more at last town meeting and they are in the process of, I, I think last I heard, they can't do it as a change order. It has to be a separate bid. So they're in process of putting together bid documentation to go out and bid for that extra piece of for, work. For the 3 million plus the 3, the three million. million, so 6 million. Okay. Yeah, because right now USDA um, is, is lending us money and giving us grant up to the 16 million, but we have 22 million um, approved by town. So there's 6 million left that, that they will be um, contracting for. How long is that 22 million on the sort of debt books in terms of that 20 years or? The, the 16 million will be a 40 year loan with USDA. The additional six will be up to us. It'll most likely be 20. Additional beyond what's already been voted on? No, no. So no. what's so what's been okay. voted on is the 22 million, but USDA has committed to 16 million of that. So we have another six million that the town will take on. Um, whether we get any grant funding for that is, I I think probably highly unlikely. But there is six million left that needs to needs to be spent. Which sounds like not a lot in comparison to the full project, but actually six million is like a really big number to have to borrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. exactly. Yeah, right. That's another library. But of course, you don't really have any choice about right. this right. But but so at least being informed about like yeah. what to expect with taxes, the things that we know about. Yeah. That was something I. Telling the library trustees, you know, nobody's going to find us every day if we don't expand the library. Right. <laughs> right. 
right yeah, which is exactly. right the, the sewer is not optional right, right. <clears throat> so the way forward <laughs> so we are going to so this is going to be on the warrant for the special town meeting this fall and we as a committee will have to vote on our recommendation for the library so that's definitely in our future and that will happen probably sometime in october october 24th right now is the date that they have sitting out there the special town meeting yeah and then the it has to be posted what two weeks before that for a special town meeting I can for remember. a special i believe it is 14 days maybe casey could weigh in on that but i i'm pretty sure it's 14 days so we'll be you know right around there will be our our vote on that um and that might actually be a, a decent time frame for a public information session mm -hmm. to early October sometime. October 24th. Okay. That's good. Um, That's good because I'm leaving town. <laughs> Nobody's going to be ducking the meeting. I imagine there'll be a lot of public information sessions uh, leading up to that. I'm sorry, what? I said, I imagine there'll be s s several other kinds of public uh, presentations about the library leading up to that the library people trustees whatever will planning. probably have their own presentation yeah i imagine and so. maybe we could coordinate yeah maybe that's yeah. what we should do our presentation yeah and also right like they are not trying to do something sneaky either they want it to be wholeheartedly supported i think yeah. mm -hmm. so it right. might be there might be some room for collaboration there that's a good idea but of course, I'm not volunteering to um, <laughs> collaborate so I, with them directly. I went and talked to Candace and okay. a couple other folks um, a week or two ago about um, that, and they're putting together some kind of infographic or something. Yeah. And I, I asked them, I, I offered to yeah. look at it and give them feedback on it um, before they have it together for the meeting. Yeah. So. Well, and maybe we're just letting them know that we'd like to do a, a, some some information sharing and like. Yeah. How do they want, how would they like that presented together before, after? Yeah. We're still waiting on exact numbers. Apparently that keeps getting delayed or yeah. something. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's waiting until next week. I can imagine it feeling like, you know, one info session is pro library and one info session is anti library. And I don't think that's the best way to get right. people to pay yeah. attention. I don't think we should be. Or yeah, so yeah. she should just be right. Yep. Right. This Fully is informed. the impact that this is going to have. And right. these are the other types of things. Yeah. Too. Yeah, I agree. I, I don't. Yeah. And we'll have a finance committee meeting in sometime early October to make a recommendation. Right. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Okay. So we have financial policies are in Brenda's hands and you're going to give us feedback by like the end of August or something, right? So early September, we can get that out to everybody and um, have a meeting sometime in September about that. Um, financial policies. And then we have financial indicators to update, which I hope will be fairly straightforward having gone through it all last year. Um, and then this whole debt thing <laughs> to talk about. And then possibly looking at the proposed projects and sort of the guessing at a time frame for the projects and coming up with some sort of finance committee. I'm, I'm going to ask for words. Yeah, a finance committee opinion on sequencing and priority or whatever. Um, all right, uh, so that's sure the time we, at least uh, indicating potential problems well in advance. Yes. A lot of these projects are yeah, wants. Right. 
you know, so you don't really need them. Should we be prioritizing the wants? That's a rhetorical question. I'm not sure we should. Well, I mean, that's right. That's the whole, that's, <laughs> there's the rub, it, right? Is it's about values and right finance. Good financial management isn't just about not spending as much money as you can. It's also about spending it wisely on things that are a good investment and right. right there's a big value judgment in there. Um, and I think it's fine for the finance committee to vote and have opinion on the on that value. I just I agree with that. Should we be should we make a value of what's more important, the library or senior center? Well, if we're voting, I mean we don't have we could choose not to vote on it. Um, if it's if it's one or the other, but I think that the what we don't want to do is just decide that spending on anything that isn't absolutely necessary is a bad idea, right? I don't think that's helpful for anyone. So, yeah, if we're deciding between two wants, the committee can vote, but it's right. It's a, seven people's preferences. Well, I think some, sometimes the wants versus the needs is a muddy area too, because yeah. some people would see it as a need yeah. and other people see it as a want. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. That's true. Right. Being able to clearly define like what we consider, like the wastewater treatment plant from a finance committee perspective, I think we all agree is a need. Right? Yeah. We don't want to get fined for having, you know, a, major pollution problem. If you talk to Kansas, the yeah. library director, you know, yeah. they have one bathroom in the whole building. Right, right. this is a problem. <laughs> you know? yeah. So to them, this expansion is a need, yeah. not a want. Right. <laughs> yeah. um, as I said, though, we seem to be winding down. We are winding down. So, okay. So we have things that we need to do in the future. We should probably pick a date for our next meeting. I'm um, going to be non-committal for the September meeting. <laughs> Rightfully so. I don't understand why. <laughs> but my schedule is fully <laughs> flexible. Huh? So you schedule it whenever you want. And I'll see Bring if I date. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> so I am gone the first through the ninth. Okay. Um, I'm gone the first through the fifth. So. I'm going the first couple of weeks. And so the 12th through the 16th is really going to be um, a busy time for me. But um, if I needed to do a meeting during that week, I could. Uh, the next week would be better, but then you're pushing up against October. <clears throat> If everyone's throwing out dates, which I think people are doing, I, I, I can't really do the second half of September, but the first okay. so it sounds uh, like we're two weeks are good. September, the week of the 12th through 16th. Yeah. Are Tuesdays, is today Tuesday? Tuesdays generally good for people. Yeah, yeah Tuesday, we can. I'm right? oh, sorry, can you? Tuesdays? What date? Any Tuesday. Are Tuesdays in general an okay day? Well, I'd rather not, but. Okay. First day. Want not a need. <laughs> <laughs> on the fifteenth, because I'll have a meeting that night. Okay. Yeah. Um. So here's what I'm thinking, though, is that we need to do a preview of the financial policies. You probably want to be involved in that discussion. Now, I was thinking that we could hand it out and discuss it, and then come back. But you want to be involved in that, but you wouldn't have to prep for it, right? Right. Do you want to do something yet before the end of August? Well, let's get our September meeting date nailed down first, and then. Okay. <laughs> well, I was. I'm just saying, for a meeting date, do you, would you rather try to pull that back into August rather than push it out into September? I'm hoping I'm going to be gone the week of the 20th. No, the week of the 15th of August. Yeah. <clears throat> week of the 22nd or the 29th how about august 30th uh, when? So it's right. august 30th that's a august Friday. 30th oh, no, is a tuesday okay i guess i'm leaving the 
following day, but I, we don't have uh, to. We don't have to keep it a Tuesday, right? Well, no. we can't do a Monday, right? Monday's right. Out? Yeah, Tuesday the thirtieth is better than any other day. That day. Yeah, I leave on the first, so. Yeah, so I can do two days. So thirtieth would be fine, fine for me because I should be done with the warrant then. If we could do what? Uh, five thirty or later, I can make it in person. Okay. Okay. But, um, Tuesday, August thirtieth. Five thirty. At five thirty, David, does that work for you? Tuesday, August thirtieth at five thirty. Yep. Yeah. I can I can make that work. Yep. This is this is not in lieu of September though, right? This is just a. Right. Then we'll meet again okay. in September. Okay. Um, and let's. Is that the thirteenth? Sounds like the thirteenth because Dave's gone late in the month and a bunch of people are gone early in the month, which isn't good there. for you, Brenda. Oh, you won't make the thirteenth? No, but that's okay. I'm one out of seven, so. So we'll do August thirtieth at five thirty. Yep. And then September thirteenth. At five thirty. Those days. September. Not You're not gonna make either one of those. I'm putting them in my calendar just 13th, in case. You said. <laughs> September 13th. Right? Yeah. Who knows what's gonna happen? All right. And we have plenty to talk about. Although I have another meeting that day if I was gonna go to a meeting. <laughs> or I have a conflict. <laughs> All right. So August, okay. August 30th. August 30th at 5 30. September 13th. And on the August 30th meeting, you want to discuss the financial policies? Is that I, what you're thinking? I do, but I want everybody to have them like at least a week in advance so you have time to read them before that. I okay. can, but that means I, Brenda needs to review them before then. Well, I, um, before we send them out to everybody. I thought I was going to get everything read by today, and, and that didn't happen. Um, I'm hyperventilating, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can, I, you know what? I'll, I'll make every effort to, to get something to you by the 23rd. You and I, maybe you and I can talk on the 23rd. Okay. Do those financial policies need to be done prior to the, is there an emergency on those? There, or could they happen um, in November? Just as easily. We could. So one of the policies is on debt and debt service. And that's where we would say, indeed, 10% is the number that we want. I think part of the idea is also that the town departments will have it well in advance okay. while they're still doing their budget. That makes sense, yeah. yeah. I'm just thinking about Brenda's workload and timing. Yeah, and Maybe exactly. that one could be So the maybe priority. we don't need to do that. It doesn't mm -hmm. really affect the departments so much when they're budgeting other than what the select board is asking <clears throat> them to consider. Um, a lot of the financial policies are are beyond what they would be thinking about. Let's, let's put it that way. Yeah. Maybe really we should good. do just the debt policy for, for August. Okay. Well, that's that's that would be doable. That like decreases the hyperventilating. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I care about that. your well, fact, I've already that. gone through that one already. So I mean, okay. I, I have some suggestions and thoughts, but yeah. Yep. All right. So that was easy. <laughs> Debt. All right. Good. We're ready to adjourn. I think. Motion to adjourn. I'm making it. Second. <laughs> All right. You said like discussion, but it was a statement. <laughs> we'll call vote quite be your name. Um, Allie Vanderveld and I. James Camby is I. Julie Chalp and I. Mark Brennan and I. John Koreski I. Dave? Aye. All right. That was unanimous. What do you know? Well, we agree on stuff. All right. Germans Thanks, everybody. 7.29 p.m. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. All right. That spreadsheet that I couldn't. Nice to meet you, David. Can we, do you have it on your computer? You do. Can I take a look at it? Maybe yeah. or we can take a look at it. See the I don't have Excel on my. Oh, okay. Should we here? Yeah, the recording. So I've developed, as a result of getting a new computer, I've developed a new, mine has developed a new quirk. I now cannot use Excel if I am connected to the internet because Microsoft keeps 
nudging me. Did she come? Uh, it's still recording. Oh, it's don't say anything mean about anyone who might be watching. Except Microsoft. Adam, yeah. Except Microsoft, who's watching, but not recorded. Mm. All right. So, so, so this yeah, well, is, I don't, it's that, better on a big screen. Ago, I got it but, right before. What do we have for? Protection. And then it, and then it would do a funny stuff on you. Like <laughs> I, it's not protected. Yeah, it's, it's not protected at all. So it's not. Um, for a, a Boston, Boston software 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 software. no, no, I don't. Um, yeah. 